there are so many ways narratives can be spinned. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's imagine, for instance, now a man touches me on my arm or on my leg in an inappropriate way. Should my response be going for his face mm. with a slap? Should my response be just pushing him aback and saying, you know, be on your space? What mm. should my response be? What's the most appropriate way to respond to an inappropriate situation? Must we all be mad? It is another exciting episode of Yeah Yeah Talk podcast. And today, of course, we're going to be jumping on trends. We're going to be discussing an important topic, a topic that has been overflogged. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into that, let's get the introductions out of the way. If by now you don't already know who your host for this wonderful show is or oh, ah. <laughs> Sometimes English is a bit difficult, so pardon, pardon my French, pardon my English, pardon my Spanish, mm. <laughs> right? But if by now you don't know who we are, welcome. It means you're new here, mm. so welcome. <laughs> yes, my name is Mide, and I have with me the beautiful Moyo. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Is How it the you? is it the Ember period that is making you look very? used <laughs> <laughs> is it used for me <laughs> yeah maybe that's on a, a couple of other things but we're good we're gonna be fine <laughs> we're gonna be celebrating soon because christmas yeah. is in the air already mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, i'm hoping that this christmas doesn't fly by so fast like the other ones right. because you know as much as everyone is anticipating the festive period there's a way you just close your eyes and open your eyes and then and it's, it's a new gone. year already. Yeah. it's all gone so yeah i can literally remember crossover nights i'm like this was like two months ago <laughs> you know it looks like it was just yesterday and now that we are here uh, but again the beautiful thing is we still have life and we right. can only just continue to live in the reality of all that we have and yeah. all that we will still get knowing that once there is life there is there hope. is hope yeah. all right i mean if you didn't if you are not going to get anything from the show today and i promise you're going to get a lot you get that once there is life there, there is, is hope, hope. <laughs> 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 all right so really when we talk when you hear the word feminism what really mm -hmm. comes to mind because mm -hmm. today we're going to be delving deep into feminism and you know women empowerment in the society and i mean to be very specific we're talking about nigeria right so feminism and women empowerment in the society and i think the word feminism has really been overflogged <laughs> over defined <laughs> under defined some people have even brought in their own definitions because mm. you like i hear some i hear people say oh i'm a feminist and then they're acting the exact opposite mm. of what a feminist or who a feminist should be <laughs> right so when you hear the word feminist what really comes to mind you know you know the truth about um some concepts especially those ones that um we can treat back to the time maybe the world war time or period or the time where there was no much clarity about people and things when you trace some of those concepts you would see that the true meaning of those concepts got lost with different generations. Right. and one of those concepts would definitely be feminism you know it's crazy that it's one word that someone like me now i don't even want to hear it <laughs> because of the misuse the turn turning it up and down to fit different agenda and purpose it can be crazy and i know i remember someone saying something recently that everything in life is about agenda and right. feminism is one of those things that people have turned twisted you know <laughs> they have whipped like cream mm. to fit different purposes but again um if you ask me what it is it would be going back to the original purpose of that particular term or term or concept as the case is and that's basically talking about advocacy for women rights basically talking about inclusion equality and i said that um some of those things get lost the true meaning of some of these things get lost with time because we probably did not experience some of the culture shock right. or changes that made some people come up with terminologies like this one. Right. Because if we're probably in that time, we will not try to be switching some things to what they are not. Yeah. And um, for those people who do not know, you know, the entire idea of feminism came up at a time. I mean, they are like different stages to feminism or the concept of feminism. And the first stage was actually at a time when 
um, you know, I, I think I, I spoke about it one time on a particular, on a different platform when I was talking about the things women have had to go through to become personalities or to be mm. identified as a personality. Right. You know, there was a time when women could not even have open conversation because they were seen as a lesser gender. gender there was right. a time when women could not even vote because, you know, it was all about, it was the men's world mm -hmm. as it was at the time. There was a time when you could not even publicly open your mouth in the public to join conversation as a woman because you cannot, because you don't have that privilege <laughs> to do so. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was a lot for the female um, gender. gender. At the time, there was even the time when um, women getting into marriage, you know, they, they it was like they were acquiring property. Property, you know, it was like the man was acquiring a property. So in that sense, um, the property being acquired had to now take the man's name, um, take the man's identity, and all that stuff. So that was the old. That's even how this old um, women taking men's son name started right. from. It came from the idea of a man is acquiring something. Mm -hmm. If you want to see that way, so there was a lot that women have had to pull through or get through to fight to be identified or to fight to have an identity mm -hmm. for the identity to be recognized. So that was like the first wave of feminism. Um, moving or um, a subcon a, a conscious In case you don't know, Moya is taking us um, <laughs> in a history class right no, now. And not I'm, I'm coming here because <laughs> when you use the word first wave, I remember uh. history class, you know, where we talked about first wave of feminism, mm, second, second wave of feminism. Was the third wave. Yes. Yeah. So when you use the word wave, I'm like, okay, <laughs> take me back to school. I'm here for it. No, Professor Dr. Mo. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that again. But, but you know, some of those truths are unnecessary to probably dive into. Yeah, Because for some people, for context, because some people just met the word and they're not even sure what it is. They are just moving with the agenda of what the person using the word is telling them it is yeah. as are right now. Yeah. That's why when you want to have conversation like this, you, you need to understand the concept from when it started. So the concept started from that particular wave and it was a matter of, okay, women can be as well. Women should have rights. Women should be able to vote. Women should be able to own properties because at that time, women could not even own anything. You can't own a property as a woman. You can't have anything as a woman. Mm -hmm. So it was that tiny shift and consciousness by some particular persons to say, okay, we shouldn't be less of what we are right and that's when that whole push started coming out gender equality and all that good stuff that has to do with um um, um women right as the case may be and again there are several angles to the to the conversation of feminism right. uh, particularly when you want to start asking yourself what really does it stand for mm -hmm. what really is the concept all about what are the principles backing this concept to be very honest the principles are very simple and you know following the times and all of the seasons that people have had to go through with women becoming what they are. Um, again, maybe when we get to what Nigerians <laughs> think it is right now, we'll probably get to all that part where it's not looking like um, it's about women having a stronger voice than the other, other gender, gender or all that stuff. No, nah, that's not what it is. Because the idea was just to ensure that um, we're able to increase women's participation mm -hmm. in the things that matters. It includes work. Right. It includes um, active participation in government because at the time, women did not even have that much right to be in those spaces. It also include expanding their choices, knowing that they have the capability to make important choices, right? And it also includes um, sexual conversation right. because at the time, we also had um, a lot of people treat women like they were sex objects. You know, it also include those kind of things ending sexual violence, you know, those are the principles that backed um, the feminism conversation. However, um, you know, as time went on, as much as it started on the backbone of what women should be or be not, right, um, or how women should be seen, it also began to transcend just the female gender. Mm. So that's why you would see that um, you hear things like everyone can be feminist, right? right? So it, it's now been used in the context of fighting for equality. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, just the woman being treated wrongly, wrongly or just the woman being 
been um, treated in a wrong way. It right. could also be used standing up for equality in the sense of a male gender, as the case may be. So it's it as tra- see times change a lot of things. Times time changes a lot, a of, lot of concepts, things, yeah. right? And that's one of the reasons why we we can't even. Sometimes you can't even sit down and have conversation on what feminism is all about anymore because you can only speak of it in the line of your own lens, how you picture it, how you see it, how you understand it. Right. And that's why there's a lot of contrasting <laughs> views, views on what feminism especially is. on the app called X. Hey! <laughs> well, you see, that's this is why I like I particularly like this um conversation because mm-hmm. it's 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 a versatile conversation. Yes, it's it going is. to cover a lot of ground. And, yes, it and it's is. going to, I, I hope that uh, people who are listening to this, because even I, I'm not just here to talk about the whole concept of feminism and women empowerment. Mm. I'm also here to learn and, you know, unlearn some of, uh, it's possible that, it, that I've had maybe um, a misconception mm. about what the word or what the concept of feminism really is. So I'm here to also learn, not just talk about my two cents or give my two cents mm. to also learn, unlearn and, you know, relearn some things because, right. Sometimes you can never overemphasize some things. And yeah. feminism is one of such things that you can exactly. never overemphasize. Uh, because now when you talked about the first wave and second wave and mm-hmm. stuff like that, it took me back to, you know, even back then, because as a literature student, um, you know, you would read some books and you books that you thought were written by men. For example, mm. um, George's, um, George Orwell's book um, about animal farm animal or something farm, like that. Yeah. I, for the longest time, I was like, George Orwell was a man <laughs> or is a man. Apparently, that's just a pseudonym because mm. then it was a taboo for a woman to be able to do something as lead to I'm calling it lead to for content. It's not like writing a book writing a book is no to, small yeah. feat, but it's not like writing a book is lead, but like as lead to or as seemingly insignificant as writing a book could be. Because mm. I mean, what as right writing a book is not in any way threatening anybody's life. Mm-hmm. Right? So something as little as writing a book, a woman had to change her name to a man's name so that at least she the could book be could, she, she could be accepted. Mm. So it just takes you back to how limited or how limiting um, the, um womanhood was back in the day mm-hmm. and why the whole concept of feminism had to be fought for. Yeah. Why we're still talking about it and why it is a bit agitating when you hear someone say, I'm a feminist and all you're doing is taking the word feminism to suit you at a particular time. Right. But when it doesn't suit you, you switch you over. Switch over. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it's, it, 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 so that's why I like the fact that we're talking about this topic. And, you know, in terms of feminism, because personally, like you said, I feel like, fem- I think, or I believe feminism is, you know, fighting for equal rights for the woman, mm-hmm. right? For the women, for the female gender, especially in the cases whereby we have been seen as the lesser vessel. And yes, in as much as we may be the lesser vessel in terms of you know strength and energy physical strength and stuff which which might not be the case anymore which might not right? be the case anymore but let's say them were the, were the weaker vessel mm. it uh, it's not it, it, i feel like right now people are now taking advantage of mm. the word because mm. i hear when i tell people i'm a feminist but i also say i'm a reasonable feminist <laughs> yeah because i have to put the word reasonable to in show front, that, to yeah, show that like them. yeah because sometimes <laughs> you hear people say i'm a feminist and then by the time the table is turned, mm. you're like, because you make a statement like, so for example, um, a, a popular figure made a statement about um, wishing the men um, happy international yeah. men's day <laughs> and said the gender, even though that gender is so irritating, but, mm. um, you know, because I'm straight, we're stuck, blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it might come off as an innocent statement, but, but let's turn the table around. Right. If a man made that statement, he would receive His a lot head of back. Would have been exactly. On the <laughs> so my point I- of feminism, uh, or rather making this point, is this: if you say you're a feminist, mm-hmm. it's because you're advocating for equal rights that is af- awarded or afforded to both men to to the male gender rather. But let's not now take advantage and think that it is okay for us to do certain things and get away with it. Like insulting men. Exactly. Um, making them feel little because you want to be up there. You know, you know, the thing is, that's why I said it, if a lot of people understood what people at that time went through, you probably would not there's there's a level you know there's a le- there's a, there's a there's a way knowledge will hit you right right that you will just become mm-hmm. like you you will just be like okay so this is the reality of women mm. and you will probably now begin to soak in that reality to understanding that see it is not a battlefront it is not war 
Even those who did what they did to women at the time, they did it out of a place of ignorance. It's not because they wanted to. It was just it was just their reality at right. the time. You know, that's that's where your wife would say, <laughs> that's, that's the point. That's the point, point of, your understand, understand, of your you understanding. Know, of your yeah. understanding. So it's not like, yeah, but some people were weaker. They were vile, right? Against women. But that, that was based off ignorance. And that's not to excuse any crazy um, things that women have had right. to go through. But the moment people began to see things differently, they stood up for what is what, what is um, what, what I would call the ease that a lot of us are enjoying, enjoying now. today. So even when we are trying to push for the narrative to be different or for the odds to be in our favor as women, we should not do it at the detriment of, of the, the other male gender. gender. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, for both the men and the women, feminism is basically just believing that the women and the men are now, listen, equal. They have the women equal rights. and the men. It's not like it's not the it's women trying to fight the men. It's that two genders can coexist, coexist on an equal level, <laughs> right? It's not a it's not a war. It's not a competition it's not where it's not a battle where because I am trying to make my voice heard, I have to subdue mm. your voice, right? It's it's not that. It's we're, not, we're not we're not trying exactly. to subdue. We're so trying to just I, pass this, on. I'm going to make a controversial statement mm. because it's a very unpopular opinion that I have. You know when people say. Um, a man should never raise his hand to beat a woman. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. However, a woman should also never raise her hand to beat a man. Mm -hmm. Because it's not okay for you to say, you cannot beat me. But if I beat you, I should be able to get away with it. And now some people argue that, um, that's why I said it's a very unpopular mm -hmm. and controversial opinion. So mm -hmm. I'm not so, hear, hear me, I'm not saying if a lady should slap a man, a man should slap her back. I'm saying in the first place, the lady should not, should not have slapped the man, except he was out of line. Even though, even though. When I say out of line, when, no, I, no, when, no, I, no, when I talk about I out of line, you, I mean right? like maybe you touch somebody in, a, in, 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 in an inappropriate way, way and you're it trying makes, to defend yourself. It makes then, sense. Yeah. However, there are some level of violence that I would never be able to stand, right? If someone touches you in an inappropriate way, of course, I know some people can be extreme, Yeah. right? The question is, are there other ways I can step out of that situation without necessarily using violence? violence. Except, of course, the person is already in putting violence or is being violent towards me, right? Because there are so many ways narratives can be spinned. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Let's imagine, for instance, now a man touches me on my arm or on my leg in an inappropriate way. Should my response be going for his face mm. with a slap? Should my response be just pushing him back and saying, you know, be on your space? What mm. should my response be? What's the most appropriate way to respond to an inappropriate situation? Must we all be mad? Mm. You know, that, <laughs> that's the question because at the end of the day, it, it, I know that sometimes you act out of impulse, right? Yeah. You you just can't stop. You're just irritated. You just feel like the like next thing to you. do <laughs> is just bring down heaven, right? But at the same time, again, like you said, if the tables were turned, it would be tagged something totally Which is, different. I, I was even going to add, so I know that some people may argue that, yes, a man should never beat a woman and maybe a woman should never beat a man. Mm -hmm. But then if a woman beats a man or let's say hits a man it's blah, a man blah, blah. That what, what, exactly I'm, I'm saying some people may even argue because i've heard this argument before some people may argue that okay if as a woman i slap a man because of in terms of physical strength the man is supposedly stronger than i am mm. whatever if he retaliates with the same physical energy mm. it's going to be more painful on me so rather than retaliate he should retaliate with something that is equally befitting that <laughs> energy and i'm like you know, you know, it's it's even spinning this to the other side. When a man beats a woman, it's um, domestic violence. violence. We know that it's violence, right? But when a woman is in that shoe, rather than call it violence as well, you'd hear things like, "Oh, the man is a weakling." How would you allow a woman <laughs> exactly. beat you? And that is part of the reasons why nowadays men in this generation or even past generations and it's seeping into this generation mm -hmm. and we're hope and thank God that men of this generation are now, you know, being mm -hmm. emotionally self aware and emotionally mm -hmm. aware. Mm -hmm. This is why you've it, you find it 
odd. A guy will find it odd to express his emotions. Mm-hmm. A guy will find it hard to cry because he doesn't want to be seen as a, a weakling. Weak person. A, a guy will find it hard to, hard to tell another guy, hey man, I love you, without se- them person like, are mm, you sure? What's going on here? Exactly. And so, and that's it's because of this whole narrative mm. of you're a man, so you can't you appear can do a to certain be certain thing exactly. or you can do, you can say certain words. And, you know, that's why these days when I find um, videos on social media where men have been expressive, I am one of those people who would easily give it a thumbs up because as much as the feminism um, concept is trying to empower women, there is an indirect fight against bring, tearing down men. men. So it's like two sides of a divide right now. Um, one is tearing down the other gender, while the other one is saying, I'm lifting up this gender. Mm. And the truth is, the world cannot become what we want it to be if both genders are not lifted up. You know, it would always feel like a battle. It would always feel like a war zone because... The whole idea of being in this space, the whole idea of being on Earth, is so that we can coexist peacefully. Exactly. Not men coexisting peacefully. Not only women coexisting, coexisting peacefully, peacefully but men and men women and women coexisting peacefully. And that would only happen if we stop twisting concepts, ideas, and um, basically living to suit certain narrative because at the end of the day no gender is lesser than the other and also we need to understand that when we are saying equal rights for both genders we are basically speaking of the limitations that happened in the past for a particular gender Mm -hmm. now that we're beginning to see that okay the message is being heard even though it's not gotten to every aspect of the world because we still see crazy ideologies like women belong in the kitchen you know we still see people say that women are not supposed to be in certain rooms or boardrooms or women are not supposed to hold certain positions and that's why you would see even in the workplace people are consciously trying to merge out the number of male staff that they employ alongside the number of women staff that they employ and that's why you would see people say maybe it should be 60 40 maybe it should be 70 30 whatever the case i don't think that we should still be at a at a point in life we're it's still capping it with numbers Do you understand? and percentage it, i don't think it should be that and that's why sometimes when i see organizations spring up and they're saying oh we oh, we are representing the female <laughs> we, oh, we are representing the male i feel like some of those things cause more division than they ought to however i understand them also from the place of trying to sensitize you know in line with some of the things that affect individual genders but at the same time i feel like some of the issues that a lot of people are currently going through right now in society are no longer gender specific they are like our problem speaking about gender specific i want to ask you do you i mean personally i believe that in as much as we're fighting for equality and because you mentioned something about a woman's place, some people still have the conversation about a woman's place to be in the kitchen, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But speaking about gender equality and, you know, roles, do you think that we still have specific gender roles? And we, I'm not talking from a place of, oh, as a woman, your sp- mm. role is to be in the kitchen. But like, you know, gender roles, because I believe generally we still have we should still have gender yes. roles because uh, you can't expect that as a woman and it's not a matter of i'm trying to be feminist you can't expect that for example as a woman i am not as strong as i know that there are women that are stronger but mm. me personally should i just agree on your midday i am not as strong as maybe my husband or my boyfriend or my male friend mm-hmm. is and so if there is a heavy appliance to be carried <laughs> i would most likely wait yeah. for that person right also because of how um you know the world has taught us mm-hmm. that a woman a, i mean women females learn how to cook and everything i'm personally of the opinion that wo- um, cooking is a life skill mm-hmm. as a but whether as mm-hmm. a man or as a woman, as a woman yeah. but then i think it may be awkward right to always expect that my husband should step into the kitchen once i mean not once in a while if you feel like cooking please by all means cook mm-hmm. if you want to order out we're going to order out. the day mm-hmm. i'm tired i say i cannot cook today let's order out or maybe enter that's fine but like to constantly expect that because a woman's place is not in the kitchen mm. i expect my husband to cook always be to there. always be there to cook so like do you think that there are gender roles yes there are gender roles and um you know as interesting as this is 
<laughs> you know, we also have, as much as we, ha I know in line with your example about a female and some roles that have been at society has placed on them. I mean, for instance, now, regardless of whatever switch turns and twists that we have in the world, uh, I don't know what science would do by, tw by <laughs> next that year, but what I was about to say is that no matter what happens in the world, the woman will be the one to give birth. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that's why, again, I say, I don't know what can happen in the future. <laughs> well, as long as we know right now, yeah. the woman will always be the one to procreate, to bring a child to life in conjunction with a man. A man right? And that also still spells out the fact that as much as one person might be doing the heavy lifting at a particular time the other person also have roles in their life that are heavy lifting right that o that also requires heavy lifting so as i said it's about coexisting right. in a logical way so for some people now birth b procreation is heavy lifting for the women mm. and yes i agree and the same way men have you know um, roles in their life that are their own every lifting situation as the case may be so it's about understanding what your every lifting situation is and then i understand what your every lifting situation is and then what doesn't seem like your own every lifting situation should not even be i shouldn't have a reason to um more like bring you down because i'm like oh no, mm -hmm. what is that? Is it because of uh, you yeah, just cleaned the house? That's my heavy lifting as far right. as I'm concerned. Right. So it's it's also the case in marriage, right? Where people need to understand what individuals are bringing, and I hate to say the word, bringing to, to the, the table, table, right? But that's the reality. Because we all have our heavy lifting situation regardless of the gender. So it's about you recognizing my situation and respecting it as what I bring to, to the, the table. table and then i also see your situation and i also respect your every lifting as something that you bring to the and table and then we both look for ways to help each, each other, other out you know to make it easier that's for it. the other that's it right. because flipping it all to the other side some women their every lifting is not being in the kitchen i mean at least that's where we are right now right. In, in the world i know a particular woman who i follow their couple i follow on social media the man is a chef right the woman doesn't know how to cook mm. so the man does all the cooking but you don't also know what she's doing but she has her own <laughs> heavy lifting, lifting situation so i think basically it's like what works for you but you cannot allow the um general opinion or public view mm -hmm. about what feminism should be or the role of a man or the role of a woman it, it, should it, them it to define how you exactly. different situation it's different for different people so in that case now the woman necessarily do not go into the kitchen. In fact, when she does, she makes it a, as content and it's all fun and jokes and cruise, right? But the man does that every lifting mm. for them. That's the unique situation in their own mind. And he and he probably would enjoy it. He enjoys it. Because that's his work. He's a professional. <laughs> He's a chef. Right. right? It doesn't mean that there are not other things that she has to now balance up for in that particular situation that probably be her own like I said, every lifting situation. Right. So it's about understanding what we used to see as normal before might not be normal now. Mm -hmm. And then what we used to see as abnormal before might not be abnormal now. Mm -hmm. So it's about understanding what works for individuals. And that's also why um, the joke about, oh, you carry a man, um, you want, when you, when you go, when you go to, um, when you take a man out, you expect, or when a man takes you out, you expect him to pay. And when you, when, you take a man out, you still expect him to, to pay. pay. Where is the quality? I mean, those jokes can be fun and all that but stuff online. there's some online. sort of truth to it. It makes, it makes it sense makes sometimes, sense because right? I'm like, if I, I can't, you're a human. I, I, I keep telling people, when we're talking about gender, mm -hmm. I want you guys to realize that we're first humans before we're assigned, right. before God assigned us, <laughs> you a male, yeah, male or and female. You're, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're first humans. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, you, I think if we look at it in this perspective, what am I expecting for th from this human? Mm. If this human expected the same in return, would I be able to, to give, give it? Would I find it okay to give or would I find it absurd? Mm. Whatever the answer is when you put it on self, mm. then you should know how to treat the other person better, better because we're yeah. first humans, right? Mm. And so I actually also want to talk about the, thing, the term of, you know, taking this whole women empowerment thing. 
is wh- when when has it become too much? Now I'm asking. <laughs> I, I, I want us to talk about this because I know was it last year or two years ago when we we're celebrating International Women's Day? Mm. I rolled my eyes. I'm like, here we go again. Another <laughs> year for another International <laughs> Women's Day. And and the thing and the thing I'm asking and the reason why I had that reaction was because I t- I feel like at some point we were overdoing it. Mm. in terms of yes we know that we, we're supposed to keep voicing out yeah. you know the role of it or rather the 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 value of women mm. in the society mm. i get that we're supposed to keep voicing that and we won't stop voicing it out but i also feel that sometimes <laughs> women are the ones who are the are the front line <laughs> of also shaming women, women. and so mm. when when we're now doing international women's day plus the ones that have been shaming supporting exactly women. plus the ones that have been shaming <laughs> and plus the ones that have actually been actively <laughs> supporting genuinely they all come together to do women's support so mm. i have to like sometimes i just roll my eyes like here we go you, again you know, you know that's why this whole thing of women are women's biggest enemy is as 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 crazy as it sounds sometimes it always appears so that there's a, there's a there's some level of truth in that particular statement and the truth is even men self no even do evil past what some women, <laughs> women are yeah. doing to some other women it w- it w- it would it, w- it will shock you when you hear some things that happen and that's why i said it's not about war it's not about battle it's not about ideology um you know boost or ego whatever i don't even know all those grammatic terms to use right now it's not about that it's about being a good person first regardless of what gender it is you're standing right. for and like i said feminism is not just about um women equality it is knowing that a man and a woman can coexist can coexist equally. can be equal can, they, because they both deserve to be in that state of life you don't right. have to stop one from enjoying one thing over the other because it's a crazy world we live in and we still have places where females are not allowed to go to school we still mm-hmm. have places where and that's why i said it's o- it's logical when we still when it appears that we have um you, we still have organizations that are pushing out those narratives because as much as you think that it has gotten better it is actually worse in some region and that's why you see that the concept is here to stay whether you like it or not because we've not been able to fully um solve the issues that some people some women are going through in their own region so it makes a lot of sense that we still have feminism still being pushed in people's faces the old equal rights still being pushed because when you when you see what some women are being made to go through in some countries i mean we've seen cases um in the western world where because of religion or because they expect women to dress a certain way um when they are not dressed in that way they beat them mm. or stone them to death i mean it's crazy. There's always a penalty there's a penalty for some of those things so it's crazy that we are still seeing those things happen in those region and it's even crazier to see that in cases or in regions where things have gotten better we are not trying to spin the feminism narrative to suit our own evil agenda mm. and then we now make it war against the male gender because if you were in a country or in a region where feminism is about survival mm. for a woman mm. feminism is about i need to breathe because there are women who actually are being suffocated right, right. now they are forced to get married early against their own will they are beaten up every Even day at a young they age before the, at, at, when they are still minors yes they they are going through so much they don't even have medic they don't have the rights or access to medical, medical care. care they don't have the right or access to education they can't speak there's two women that are going through that thing i described as the first wave mm. even in 2023 so imagine the level of injustice imagine the level of 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 madness when you now see that because some people have it easy their own feminism is now about who will pay the if you two both two both of you go for dinner who, who should pay, pay or should we two, go dutch you know <laughs> you like, it's crazy when you now see that that those trivial crazy stuff are, are the basis of feminism for you people because i mean at the end of the day you are not having it as crazy you're not seeing the craziness that some women are made to go through so that's why sometimes when i just see the old feminism agenda it's it's i just i'm just like please you guys you guys you, you've not so even seen sometimes anything sometimes i think that what, what, 
when I say it's too much, I think sometimes we as women overdo it because it kind of like feels like in as much as we're trying, because we mentioned this earlier, in as much as we're trying to amplify the value of women mm, in society, mm. we're on the flip side, you know, degrading or suppressing the value the of, of men, men the values of men and, and it should so never be that because okay now we celebrate mother's day i'm i'm not anti-woman by the <laughs> way because clearly <laughs> i'm a woman and <laughs> like i said i'm a reasonable feminist mm. right but like we celebrate mother's day twice and i think mothers deserve all the celebration mm. they can get mm. we celebrate father's day once and on Father's Day, we still have women. Yes, you. King yes, <laughs> yes. We agree <laughs> that you you single handedly raised your child. <laughs> Kudos to you. We like we we see you, and we nobody mm-hmm. is saying that you did not own your yeah, your your role. your role. You owned both roles, mm. but you don't see men who have single handedly raised their children come mm. on Mother's Day mm. to talk about um Happy Mother's Day to, to me, me too. Um, uh, um, 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 King man. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but like do you like do you get yeah. and so we're not saying that you don't deserve your accolades but sometimes let men they let don't men they breathe. don't always get it <laughs> they don't always they don't always get all these celebrations and I think, accolades i think, I think, I think it's because um like i said earlier on we've made it um a rival situation it feels like we are in a war zone it feels like there is always a battle against the man and the woman and that's because of the silly undertone that a lot of people have come to put into the idea of feminism and like i said if we knew what people went through back in the day or some people are still going through right now especially in some countries in the world or some region of the world um you you would understand that all this flimsy fight or all this flimsy excuse to try to suppress Mm -hmm. a man to feel good as a woman is not even necessary and then talk about the workplace it's crazy (laughs) female i've heard so many stories about female bosses Mm. and i've heard like when when i say i've heard stories i mean i've heard people complain about how to rather work with with all the shenanigans that go on with having Mm. a male boss in terms of sexual harassment and stuff you will hear people still say I'd rather work with a male boss than work, work with, with a, a female, female boss, boss. because mm. sometimes most sometimes you just find that you're unnecessarily mean because mm. you're trying to have this power play. I'm like, we are not dragging power with Nobody you. Nobody is dragging power with you. Nobody is trying to because you know there's just already that idea of of um if I try to be soft, they're gonna take me for granted. For granted. So I need to show power, I need to be and macho, you I need it. to and, and then, then you just it, cause people it, to hate it's you not a fight. because of what <laughs> It's not. It's not <laughs> a fight. It's not war. You need. To, I think. I think for both gender, the message would be that you need to first be comfortable yeah. in the gender that you belong, and then understand that whatever it is you're supposed to be doing is not in um, battle or competition or rivalry with the other gender. It's about living together in a world that there are already too many problems to tackle mm. and live coexist on on peacefully like crazy on a peaceful note because at the end of the day there are still so many challenges to battle there are still so many war <laughs> to fight <laughs> you know as a, as right. as the case may be so why should um something that is supposed to liberate us be one that is now entangling us in such mind battle and mind play that it's now about oh i can't take this nonsense from this person i can't take that nonsense from this person or this and that i mean we are fighting that's why this old mother's day father's day international men's day international women's day i mean i'm even tired I don't even, <laughs> I tra- see to be honest i try not to celebrate it anymore because i, I already s- see that when those days come it's about the subtle jabs it's about mm-hmm. the mental battle like, you, like, like that just comment fighting. like that comment like I, that comment was so if you want to wish them international happy international wish them and move, move on. on you don't have to insult anybody in like, the process like people are fighting so many invisible battle that you can't even i'm just like oh more ah, like ah, you know like you're just like ah ah who is doing you people like why are you people <laughs> how fighting? is it doing you like, why are you tightening it to your chest you're tightening the wall to your chest why I, I just I just feel like the world would be better, will be, will be more kind if we choose to be more kind. Like the world would be better if we choose to be more kind because at the end of the day, 
Uh, it's not a war. It's not a war. Uh, and it's not a two war heads zone. are usually better than one. Definitely. So if we're going to, even if we're fighting a war, we can't be fighting it on separate heads. And yes. if we're fighting a war to, you know, um, make everybody, e- you know, for gender equality, then mm. both genders have to come together to agree mm. that we want, like, yes, we are advocating for gender equality. We can't be fighting each other mm. on one end. And then th- as we are fighting each other, we're also fighting the other gender. The other it gender. doesn't work that way. And, and I think it's also important for people to know that feminism is not about who should do what in the house. Mm. Feminism Mm -hmm. is not all about who should spend more. (laughs) Feminism is not all about who should take care of the child. (laughs) You get. And that's why silly things like when a a man is backing the child or carrying the child and they're like, he's helping his wife. You're 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 taking taking care care of of your your child. child. Okay. So I think it's important that we begin to use the, the right language to describe things so that we do not continually get caught up in this mess of comparison, in this mess of um, gender suppression, because I feel like we have got to that point where one gender is consciously being sup- suppressed in the name of trying to uplift the other gender. It's it's a whole lot. In fact, the issue of feminism is one that we cannot even finish in dissecting. It's a lot. But I think right. if there's one thing we've been able to do with this particular um, episode is to have you go check these things out by yourself don't just go with the agenda don't just run with your um idol or your mentor what they are saying about the other gender don't just go with the flow you need to understand concepts before you absorb or adopt those concepts Mm -hmm. you need to understand why the why you know that's how they used to say find the why Mm -hmm. Uh, that why that you refuse to find in further maths or in mathematics now is a good time for you to find it because the only way you can float as a good human imagine remember i did not say just human the only reason you can float as as a, a good, good human, human is if you understand the why behind every concept that you're running with, every agenda that you're running with, right. and you can beat your chest to say that I understand this thing. That's why I am I am operating in this particular space. It's not because somebody said it on Twitter. It's not because somebody is making jest of men on Instagram. It's not because somebody is calling women this on um, Facebook. It is because I understand what should be. And what each gender are supposed to operate in. Because at the end of the day, we need each other to survive. Right. And uh, speaking of helping out, this is not saying that when um, a, the male gender or the female gender lends a helping hand to you in the house, say your husband is helping you in the kitchen mm-hmm. or uh, you, you say, no, you're not helping out. You're, you're, it's your responsibility. <laughs> or to say that your wife is, um, you know, um, helping you out on the project. Mm-hmm. Say, no, you're not helping out. No, that's not what we're saying. We're just saying let's use the right terminology yeah. for the right situations. Mm-hmm. And I'm so happy we had this particular discussion because it's all encompassing. And mm-hmm. even though mm-hmm. we're, uh, it's impossible to, to um, you know, talk about this whole feminism discussion in one conversation. Right. It's imp- because it's it, 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 it's a conversation that needs a lot of learning, relearning, mm-hmm. a lot of open-mindedness. Because mm-hmm. some people have been so drenched in their they are con- Almost they are fighting men. Yes, hey. exactly. Some people ah, are so drenched so in, in their context of, <laughs> or their their definition of feminism <laughs> that they have failed to see feminism for what it should mm. be and are living in a bubble of what they think mm. it is. Right. So feminism is not a conversation we can have in one sitting. But mm-hmm. I just hope that you go you go back and look into history, mm-hmm. go on the internet, read books about feminism to know why the word even came into existence mm. in the first place. To know what it really means to know the true context and the full extent of what feminism is so that we know that okay well, if this is what feminism feminism is have i been applying it mm-hmm. rightly mm-hmm. but yeah this has been such an enlightening it conversation has. i would say thank you to my guest moya for joining i don't me understand <laughs> <laughs> you don't say I didn't tell you. You they all sound about like yeah. That's the flow. That's the flow. <laughs> okay, I've been speaking English things. I'm sorry, guys. I thought I, I, I thought I could maintain. I thought I could keep my composure to the last, but apparently I cannot. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but yeah, this has been an exciting conversation. Yes, Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Now, do not forget to hit the subscribe button mm-hmm. in case you have not hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And yes, click that bell. It's not there for design. It's, for, <laughs> it's, for, it's there so that you can get notified whenever a new episode of Yeah Talk podcast 
pops up drops and make sure you follow us on instagram at chaya talk underscore podcast yes our 200k giveaway should, should we mention it <laughs> like, we don't know sorry hold on we don't know when to air this episode yes we don't so yeah, yeah. so we don't know when to air this episode yeah so make sure you follow us on instagram at chaya talk underscore podcast yes thank you again until next time i remain your favorite screen ever ever smiling ever glowing <laughs> ever dazzling me day and yeah more you're signing out soon <laughs> something's worrying you anyways i don't need to loud or blow the trumpet <laughs> this is me signing out to you next time guys remember we are still on the journey of yeah. becoming good humans. humans yeah bye for now bye. see you next time bye.